Okay, here's 5.6, proving triangles congruent by ASA and AAS. So these are our last two triangle congruency theorems. They're very similar to each other. They're very easy to get confused, but they are definitely different. So the big difference is the side is in between the two angles, which means I'm going to have an included side here. So, you know, that's why the S is between the two A's. And here, this is a non-included side. Okay, so that S is not between the two A's. All right, so let's uh, talk about what that means. So we've got two angles, two pairs of angles that are congruent in these two triangles. Let's say these bottom two angles are congruent. And then let's say the top two angles are congru a congruent pair as well, okay? And let's make the same thing happen in the um, second um, the second theorem here because we are also going to have two pairs of congruent angles, okay? Um, all right, so we got to figure out what our included side is going to be, and that's the side that's going to be um, be part of both of these angles. It's going to be touching both angle A and B. So it's that means it's going to connect A and B. That would be my included side. Okay. So when you have two angles and an included side like that, then the triangles are going to be congruent by ASA. Okay. So in my second um, picture here, I don't want to use this side. This would be an included side. So I either want to use this top, the, the right top side or the bottom. It doesn't matter. Both of those are non-included, but it can't be the one that's um, in between the two angles. So let's make it these two here. And that would be AAS. Okay. Sometimes I people, see people call this SAA, which I understand what they mean, but it's always written as AAS. So um, that's two angles and a non-included side. Two pairs of angles. Okay. All right. Um, so let's talk about AA. So this is one, um, that I see people try to use. And I just listed angles twice that I only put two A's because if you have two angles, then the third angle is actually going to be congruent by the third angle, um, theorem. So, um, AAA or AA, it actually does not work. And here's the reason why it's, let's say we have a, an equiangular triangle. Well, here's a bigger equiangular triangle. Hey, they're the same shape, but clearly they're not the same size, right? This one's bigger than that one. So these are not congruent triangles. And that means, no, it doesn't work. So I just wanted to illustrate that because I see people use that um, on accident, but it doesn't actually work, okay? All right, um, so next page. Let's look at another possible example. All right, so I've got ASS or SSA, okay? And the answer here, I'm just gonna cut to the chase, is gonna be no. So the way, an easy way to remember that, it spells ass or ass backwards. Ass and ass backwards doesn't work. It would be inappropriate, right? So we can't use that. So that's one way to remember that those do not work. So you can't just make any combinations of A's and S's and have it work. AAA doesn't work. These don't work either. Okay. And I'm going to try to explain why. So in this top triangle here, we've got an angle and two sides and that angle is, is non included. So if you were naming it, you'd want to put the, do one of these, right? With the A not in between the two S's. But here's the thing. If you think of this as a hinge up here. So if I could take this side and kind of swing it about, if I take that and, and swing it to the inside, I could put it at a certain angle where this, this segment would still be that same length and it wouldn't change. So this would be the same as that, right? So it wouldn't change this um, side, the length of this side or this angle. So that means I could have two different um, triangles that have the same given info. So the, the measure of these two sides would be congruent, those two sides would be congruent, and my non-included side would be congruent, but clearly these are not congruent triangles, even though they have the same, um, that, that same, those same sets of congruent sides and one pair of congruent um, non-included angles, okay? So the ones we're just talking about that don't work 
Um, let's put those in our list. Um, so these are ones that don't work that people try to use sometimes. So that or just the double A version. Um, okay, I'll put the double A one there as well. That doesn't work either. And then ass and ass backwards don't work either. Okay, so don't use these because they don't work. All right, but let's make a list of all the ones that do work since we've covered everything now. So we started off with SSS. We had SAS. Um, let's see, we have, today we had um, ASA and AAS. And then we also have HL, that's the one hypotenuse leg, that's the only one not made of, of A's and S's. But there's a comprehens comprehensive list and that's all of them. These are the ones that work, these ones don't work but people try to use them sometimes. Okay, so with that in mind, um, on the next page, let's take a look at some uh, triangle pairs and try to decide if they're congruent by one of these triangle congruency theorems. Okay, so there's a list of them up at the top of this page too. Okay, so, um, all right, looking at this first example, I, it's not HL and I've only got one pair of sides and one pair of angles. It's not HL because as far as I know, they're not right triangles. Um, so I need to find something else, right? This is supposed to mean that those are congruent. But I've got, um, I've got my bow tie situation here. So I've got intersecting lines, which are going to create vertical angles. So I could use the vertical angles theorem to get those two. And now I'm in business. I've got two angles and a side, OK? So I've got two angles and a side. So it's going to be one of the new ones then. But I, I have got a really important decision to make because I need to get the right one. So I need to think then, is this side included in the two marked angles? So I'm asking myself, is this side included and is this side included? It's not actually. If you look where the two angles are, the side that would be included is up here, right? And in this triangle, the included side between those two angles would be right there. So this is a non-included side. Um, so that means I'm going to use AAS. I don't want the S in, in, in between the two A's. So my answer here is going to be yes. I used the vertical angles theorem to get that missing pair of angles. And then I used um, AAS. This is a little cramped. Maybe I should have written underneath the picture. OK, so maybe I'll write in the margins in the rest of these. OK, this next one. The, our, uh, this means these are congruent. Okay, so I've got two pairs of um, angles congruent so far. That's not enough yet. AA doesn't work, but wait a sec. We can use this side because it's in both triangles. So that side is going to be congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And then I've got two angles and a side. And again, this is a non-included side. The included side in the, in the bottom triangle would be there. In the top triangle, the included side would be there. It's a non-included side. So this is going to be a yes again. We used a reflexive property of congruence. And then um, AAS again. OK. All right. Hey, kind of the same as the last one. We can use reflexive again to get this as congruent to itself. Now we've got two angles and a side. Um, this is going to be ASA. This side is in between the two marked angles. So I used reflexive and then ASA. Okay. Reflexive once more. These get pretty repetitive because you see the same kind of thing happening over and over again. Um, so then we've got SSS, three, three pairs of congruent sides. So yes, reflexive and SSS. Ah, property of congruence, should put the congruence symbol there. Okay, so you'll see um, reflexive property and also vertical angles theorem are used all the time to find missing pieces. Once in a while you'll see alternate interior angles if you've got some parallel sides, but reflexive and vertical angles come up all the time. And this next one, we've got vertical angles, right? These are vertical angles. Um, and then we've got enough 
for SAS. We have two sides and an included angle. That's the angle in between those two sides. So this is going to be a yes. Vertical angles theorem and SAS. Okay. And hey, once again, we've got um, reflexive property tells me that segment's congruent to itself. Anytime you get two triangles glued together like that, we'll use reflexive, okay? And then let me look at the pieces. I've got, this would, I could use this as a pair of angles, but then it would be ASS. That doesn't work, or SSA, that's ass or ass backwards. But wait a second, we've also got HL um, that we could possibly use because we've got right triangles. And let's think about this. This would be a leg down here, and this is a leg in those right triangles. Any side that's not a hypotenuse is a leg, and then the the parts in the middle, that the pink piece, that is the hypotenuse in both triangles. So I do have HL here, okay? So I had to use the reflexive property first. Uh, so my answer is going to be yes again. I used reflexive to get that last pair of angles, and then I used HL. All right, next page, let's uh, try some two-column proofs. And really, you know, these are two, you could write two-column proofs out of these. This is just a shorter version. Um, but let's uh, make it more formal. So we're really asking, are these two triangles congruent, right? So we could have put that on the last page and figured it out. But we're just going to do it in a more formal way, all right? So um, step one, we want to rewrite our given info which that's already written there so that's nice and then the reason for that's going to be given okay and then i also like to make sure that that info is in the picture so it says angle a and angle b are congruent that's in there and then ae and be are congruent that's in there too okay so we're good to go there and i'm looking at this and thinking can i use one of those theorems i've only got a pair of angles and a pair of sides that's not enough yet but i do have um, my bow tie situation where i have intersecting lines and that's going to create vertical angles like that okay so I can say those two angles are congruent by the vertical angles theorem so step B don't just let, name those angle E because we could be talking about these angles right if we're talking about angle E so I'm using three letters I'll call the bottom one angle AED okay and I'll call the top one BEC okay those are congruent by vertical angles theorem remember when you name a an angle with three letters the vertex goes in the middle that's important okay all right so now looking at this hey i do have enough to say that these triangles are congruent right i got two angles and a side and i just want to think is that side an included side it is it connects these two angles that i have marked right in both triangles so um, this is going to work. That means I can finish the proof, two angles and an included side, that's going to be ASA. Okay? And then when I'm naming the, the triangles that are congruent, I want to name it just like it is in this proof statement. Um, so triangle AED is congruent to triangle BEC. Okay? And there it is. So that's a pretty straightforward proof. You just need the vertical angles and then ASA. Okay. All right. Um, all right. This one is a little trickier. So um, given info is rewritten right there. Let's write given. Okay. And it's not in the um, picture yet. We could put it in the picture. We can try to. Let's see. Um, so um, angle C is congruent to angle D. Okay. And then um, AC. So that's this piece is congruent to this piece. Those two are congruent. It's a little tricky to put that in the picture because wherever you put the little ticks, you might think that you're talking about this segment or that segment. I'm talking about the whole thing, okay? So um, this is where my little hint comes in. So I've got overlapping triangles here, okay? And one way to, to think about this is look at the proof statement, ACE. Triangle ACE is this triangle because it could be, you know, that they're asking for these two little triangles to see if those are congruent, but 
in this case, they're not, right? ACE is that one, and then ADB is the other bigger triangle. So I've got these two overlapping triangles. So it makes it a lot easier to put in the given info and also to see what's happening if you sketch these separately. So the one that I have pink is going to be right there. That would have A, C, and E at the corners. Okay, and then the green one, and of course you don't have to use different colors, just I'm just doing that to make it clear, to try to make it clear. Okay, that's supposed to be it's supposed to be an A at the top of that triangle there. Okay, so let's now put the given info in the picture. Angle C and angle D are congruent. And then it's easier to mark A C and A D being congruent now on these um, when they're separated. Okay, so I'm trying to get these congruent. I got a pair of angles, a pair of sides. I need something else. Anytime you have overlapping triangles like this, they're going to share something. They're going to share either a side or an angle. Well, let's look at the sides. Well, the green triangle, no, none of the sides. I mean, this, this AE here is a pink side to the triangle. And it's part of the green side, but it doesn't share that whole side. So they don't share any sides, but they do share an angle. This angle is in both triangles. It's the top of both triangles, right? So now I can say, hey, angle A is congruent to itself, and that actually gives me a pair of congruent um, angles um, from triangle to triangle. So I'm going to say um, angle A is congruent to angle A. It's okay to we'll name that with just one letter because there's only one angle A in the picture, right? Um, and that is the reflexive property of congruence that I just used when something's congruent to itself. Okay, and now looking at the separated triangles, it's pretty easy to see. Okay, got two angles and a side. I just need to decide if it's an included side. Here it is. It connects the two angles, the two marked angles in both triangles. So um, I can now finish the proof. So triangle ACE is congruent to triangle A. DB by ASA. Okay, and that is the end of the section. I will see you next time.